I'm Dave Halsing. Um, I'm the um, project manager for the South Bay Salt Pond Restoration Project. Um, it's been a couple of days since I've been called the new uh, John Bourgeois, so um, I'm, that's um, much less frequent than it used to be, so I'm kind of glad about that. Um, our project is a multi-phase, multi-decadal project. It's over 15,000 acres that were acquired in 2003 from Cargill. Um, most of you do know something about this project, but I was encouraged to um, make sure that I uh, sort of provided some history and some background and some context for those few who don't. And also maybe just as a refresher, not everyone lives and breathes with this project every day the way I do. So um, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start at the beginning uh, and tell you about our three main goals. We have three goals. Uh, one is to restore a mix of habitats for special status species, primarily marsh habitats, but not exclusively so. Um, we have other kinds of special status species that, that need uh, their own kind of pond habitat or these dry salt pan habitat. And so we have to balance those different restoration goals. Um, we also wanna maintain or improve on the current levels of flood protection that are along the communities, uh, that are in the communities along the shore of the bay. Um, none of our landowners uh, are, are flood protection agencies. Uh, and so we do very little real flood protection on our own. Uh, mostly we do that in partnership with uh, local uh, flood management agencies or public works agencies. And I'll tell you more about that a little bit later. And our third goal is providing wildlife compatible uh, public access opportunities, recreational trails, boat launches, interpretive platforms, things like that. We really wanna bring people into contact with the Bay and the sloughs and the, the area around it. Um, so uh, the project got started in, in 2003. It was, um, as I mentioned, a, a a transfer that was partially a donation from Cargill, partly a, a purchase by um, a, a mix of public and private funds um, of over 16,000 acres. Most of that was in the South Bay, almost all of it. There was some up in the, the Napa salt marshes. And my favorite thing about this slide is this tells you a little bit about how long we've been doing this project. This is Senator Feinstein, uh, and this was the highest resolution digital photo one could take in 2003. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, it, we've been at this for a little while. Um, what, uh, what that acquisition and that transfer included was uh, everything in blue up here that became really the core of uh, California Department of Fish and Wildlife, then Fish and Games, Eden Landing Ecological Reserve. Everything in green here in San Mateo County, this is the Ravenswood Pond Complex, and everything in green across the, the whole of the far South Bay in Santa Clara County. Uh, those two areas together um, really became the, the core of the uh, Don Edward San Francisco Bay National Wildlife Refuge. Together, those are the 15,000 acres I mentioned before. Um, everything in the gold, Cargill still operates and makes salt, pond, uh, salt on, and, uh, and everything in pink they actually still own outright, and that includes this little pond right over here that we can talk about uh, later if, if we have interest. Because this um, project is, is so large and so spread out, and because there are so many competing goals and so much scientific uncertainty, we have to implement this project in phases. And one of the biggest uncertainties and one of the reasons we're doing this in such a stepwise manner is that we really wanted to understand these ecological trade-offs. So we have the California Ridgeways Rail, used to be called the Clapper Rail, uh, and uh, it, needs, it needs tidal marsh, it needs salt marsh. Uh, that's where it nests and, and that's where it forages, but you know, the, uh, the Western Snowy Plover, also a threatened species, uh, likes to nest on these um, barren salt pans that are in some of the, the remnant uh, salt production areas. And so we have to trade off between these two. We can't, we can't make it all marsh or we would, uh, we would drive local plover um, populations down towards zero. And so the, my predecessors, I say we, but it's really my predecessors. I was not involved in the project at the very, very outset. Uh, established an adaptive management system and came up with this context of a restoration staircase with the idea being that, um, you know, over a 50 year implementation period, the project would be implemented in a series of steps uh, that would work towards a mix of tidal marsh and managed pond enhancements. And so they would, they would make, some, make some improvements, do some restoration, make some changes to the landscape, see what happened, study it for a little while they, while they were planning and designing and, and modeling and permitting the next bit and see where they were. So phase one got to about here on this restoration staircase, about 25% of the total area was restored to tidal marsh. And we're in the midst of implementing phase two now. And when we get there, we're gonna be just shy of 50-50. The project planned um, to, to stop somewhere between 
50-50 mix of marsh and ponds and, and going as far as 90%. I don't know if anyone ever thought we would get all the way to 90, but we wanted to get to at least 50 and then see where we were and see how much further we could go. And so that's what we've been uh, working on. And um, in phase one, which was completed in 2014, there were over 3,000 acres of tidal uh, and muted tidal rest, uh, marsh restored and over 700 acres of uh, managed pond enhancements. So this is one of my favorite sort of photo pairs right here. This is the pre and post project uh, aerial kite photography from, from Chris Benton. It's about 10 years apart and we've got healthy marsh forming and, uh, and, and Ridgeways rail moving in and um, salt marsh harvest mouse moving in as well. In some of the uh, managed pond enhancements, we did these island experiments doing different uh, shapes of islands and seeing what kinds of bird would, birds would use each of those. Um, we did a salinity experiment to see if we could sort of get ever increasing numbers of, of um, different kinds of wildlife that prefer different salinities to forage in and, and get a lot of different kinds of um, pond dependent wildlife in a small space. So um, that's been a very uh, successful phase one uh, um, outcome from the, the restoration end. Um, and with regard to public access, we also added seven miles of, of, uh, new, of new trails. Most of those are on levees, some are on elevated boardwalks. Um, all of those have viewing platforms and interpretive signage uh, associated with them. And um, there's also a nice kayak launch here at Eden Landing on, on Mount Eden Creek. This is during the construction. It's obviously not done yet, but uh, it's done now. And uh, you can drive right up and drop your boat right here and go park just off the screen here and, and then uh, walk down and paddle right out to the bay and pick up the, uh, the Bay Water Trail or, or any of the other uh, places you want to go. Um, so it's quite nice. This is one of the better interpretive platforms we have. It's at the, the best preserved salt works um, in, in the bay. And it's got, um, it's an elevated boardwalk and it's got uh, really good information on the history of the salt making in the bay and, and who the workers were that, that sort of lived in, in encampments and things there uh, and, and did the work on the salt pond. So that was phase one. We can talk more about that during the Q&A if you want. We are um, at the earliest stages of implementing our phase two work. I got involved in this project early in 2012. The company I was at then won the bid to do the um, alternatives development, design, modeling, uh, sequinipa, and permitting uh, on, on phase two. So I've been working on it since then in one way or another. Um, and so this is the part that I am even more deeply steeped in. Um, our phase two actions are occurring in five locations around the bay, as noted in the, in the red circles here. Um, some of these are entirely new locations that we haven't worked in since the acquisition. Others are modifications of previous actions. Um, the idea behind the uh, adaptive management plan was that we, we would want to be able to modify previously completed actions if they weren't doing exactly what we wanted. So I'll highlight some of those as we get to them. Um, altogether, these areas in red are uh, just about 4,000 acres. It's, it's a mix of tidal marsh and several different kinds of managed pond enhancements. We've got about five miles of new trail and, and many, many connections with existing trail networks, including the Bay Trail Spine. Um, we've got at least one and we're working on up to two other partner projects with uh, city and county flood management agencies to implement their projects uh, onto or, or within uh, our project areas. So um, we're really working on, on all three of those fronts again. Um, so as I mentioned, four locations at the refuge and then the entirety of Southern Eden Landing. And I'll just walk you very briefly through those right now. I, you know, I realize we're a little over time and, and uh, some of this stuff I can go really deep into. So um, if you have questions on these, we can do that at the end and we can come back and talk about these in as much detail as you want. I'm just gonna outline very quickly what we're doing at each of these sites. Uh, these are the island ponds. These were actually some of the first ponds uh, breached and exposed to tidal flows in, in 2006. They've been restoring quite well here in this western pond and in the center pond. A19 here in the east, not so much. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some breaches to the northern end and take down some sections of levees and connect it to A20 and improve the sort of spatial distribution, the complexity and the connectivity of, of the marsh restoration uh, that's going on there. And it will be, um, we expect it to be a benefit for native fish as well. So that's a very simple bit of work, um, but that's a modification of a previous action, like I mentioned, was something we were looking at. Down here at the A8 ponds, which are, uh, this is the town of Alviso right over here. Um, these also were part of the project's phase one actions, 
where the uh, the armor notch was put in. This was a connection between the Guadalupe River and Albizo Slough to allow gradual recirculation of water into these ponds to address uncertainties regarding mercury and how the, the, the sort of resuspension of, of legacy mercury contamination might affect water, fish, wildlife. Um, we've been studying that for over a decade and we feel like it's good to move forward. So the phase two action is just building these habitat transition zones, these ecotones here at the southern ends and corners of these ponds in preparation for a future tidal marsh restoration. Um, we left the center of this open so that we could uh, possibly collaborate with Valley Water to redirect Santa Masikino Creek and this is Calabasas Creek right here, redirect both of those into the interior of the pond. And in fact, um, we've uh, recently partnered with Valley Water to put together uh, a, a grant proposal um, to the Restoration Authority to fund um, planning, design, modeling, uh, CEQA uh, of, of, of that connection in the future too. So um, just another example of some ways that we're trying to do everything we do in partnership with others. Um, at the Ravenswood Ponds in San Mateo County, this is this is underway. Um, we've been uh, in the last year and a half or two um, worked with the dirt broker to import a lot of material to raise up this center levee and and this levee that runs uh, here on the eastern end of of these small ponds over here. The idea behind doing that was to create hydraulic separation so that we could do three different kinds of restoration here. We want to restore tidal marsh in R four by putting a breach up here at the corner. Um, we want to keep R3 dry for Western Snowy Plover and, and enhance our ability to, um, to drain it more consistently and earlier in the year so that it's better nesting habitat and then refresh the forage uh, water quality in the, in the borrow ditches around the edges of it so that um, they can feed better. And then over here in these smaller ponds on the, on the Western side of the complex, uh, we want to keep these as managed ponds, but uh, fit them with water control structures to circulate water through them and, um, and uh, sort of manage them for shorebirds and waterfowl and things like that. So there's a lot of culvert work going on here next year. Um, we've been partnering with the city of Menlo Park on all the import and the placement of, of material to build these habitat transition zones up against the park and, and to work with the uh, city of Menlo Park, the city of Redwood City, and the San Mateo County Flood Control District um, to incorporate one of their local uh, flood reduction projects in, into this one. And I'll tell you more about that shortly. So this is underway. We, we moved um, a lot of material in this year, over uh, 100,000 cubic yards. And in fact, they were thinking about even bringing more in today, hoping to get some more in before it starts raining. Uh, at the Mountain View Ponds, we, we had thought we might be able to um, begin this construction this year. We, we are still working out the details with the city of Mountain View on um, a number of concerns that they have about, about traffic impacts, about changes in um, circulation of, of uh, water in the lower reaches of Stevens Creek and Permanente Creek when we make these ponds tidal. Um, of course, the, the adjacent shoreline park is a closed landfill, and so there are concerns about um, about how the project will affect the closed landfill. So we've been, you know, very systematically working through those with the city, and um, I think we're I think we're getting close on those. Um, but the idea at these two ponds, A1 and A2W, is over 700 acres. We want to make those um, uh, fully tidal ponds. Um, we're going to build these transition zones on their southern edge, and again, that's for habitat value, but it's also going to help protect the landfill from scour and erosion. Um, we're going to add a bunch of breaches. We're gonna armor two of them and bridge them so that we can maintain PG&E access all the way out to this point out here. These red lines here are, are PG&E power lines and towers that run through the area. We're also putting a public access trail out to the bay here. You know, the, the Bay Trail Spine runs right along the southern edge of these ponds. So, so that's a nice mile plus long trail out to a viewpoint and a shorter segment over here. Um, so this is a really good, complex, interesting area to work in. There's a, there's a lot to do there. Um, but we're, we're getting close. Uh, and at Southern Eden Landing, um, we are similarly, similarly doing different kinds of, of restoration. We're gonna, we're gonna do three rows of levee enhancements, one on the Eastern side and, and around the remaining Cargill Pond here. We wanna, we wanna just make sure that nothing we do changes the existing flood risk uh, to the, the communities behind it in any adverse way. We're gonna build up the, the center berms um, so that we have the hydraulic separation necessary to restore these ponds differently. We're gonna build up this outer burn, berm to um, make sure that it holds the line until we can do the, the, 
full tidal marsh restoration in these four large bay ponds here. Then install a bunch of water control structures here so that we're able to manage these ponds differently for different kinds of pond dependent wildlife. These are very large. Um, these are several hundred acres each. And then these, uh, these four um, ponds down here are already connected to the federal flood control project. We're just going to improve the circulation in and out of these and change the ability to um, sort of manage them as muted, muted tidal systems so that we form a muted tidal marsh there. We're going to add the bay trail spine that right now ends right up here. We're going to add that all the way down the eastern edge and then kind of wrap it around the sea ponds here and, and down to the Alameda Creek uh, Regional uh, Trail here that East Bay Regional Parks manages. There's some complications with the, um, the second step of this that have to do with getting um, a 408 permit uh, from the Army Corps of Engineers and all the congressional approvals needed to modify a federal flood control levy to make these eventual connections larger and to add connections here to improve the, the connectivity to the flood control channel. But that is our goal. We're continuing to work towards it. Um, we've, uh, you know, we met recently with the flood control district of Alameda County, and we're going to, you know, keep pursuing that as well. We really do want to make those connections, not only for the restoration of, of the marsh habitat, but also because a lot of efforts to restore um, salmonid runs to Alameda Creek and uh, we, if we can add that nursery habitat connectivity there um, for, for the migrating uh, fish it will be a big benefit to them as well. So um, what have we gotten done in phase two? I've sort of alluded to most of this but um, the Santa Clara Valley Water District has been importing uh, dirt from its um, stream maintenance program when it dredges certain creek channels, if the material's clean enough, it's been importing those to the A8 ponds and that's what's been used to build those ecotones uh, at the corners of those ponds. Um, so that's that's an ongoing project, it's not grant funded, so that's just gonna be, you know, as they get material, if it's clean enough, they'll bring it in. Um, the simple project at the island ponds that I mentioned is going to bid now. Um, the, uh, the access improvements are gonna be made this year and then uh, as soon as nesting uh, season is done, um, in 2021. It's only about three weeks of earthwork to, to work, do that project. At Eden Landing, Ducks Unlimited has been working very actively with us to do the 30% designs. AECOM has finished up the modeling uh, of different scenarios that the flood control district wanted. Um, and so we have taken the next steps towards design and we're beginning permitting. We've, uh, we've met with the Brit a couple times and presented the initial ideas and talked through some different uh, questions and opportunities that they had. Um, and, uh, and we're gonna keep rolling with that. I think we're in a good place at Eden Landing. Um, at Ravenswood, as I mentioned, 100,000 cubic yards moved in this year, and that was in spite of losing a couple of months to, to COVID shutdowns. And then when work resumed, it was nesting, nesting uh, Western Snowy Plover all along the haul route. And so uh, we had to avoid that area for a long time too. So that, that, uh, the fact that we were able to get that much done this year, I think is, is commendable on their part. Uh, and ours and the city of Menlo Park for being so flexible with us. We have continued to work with the Bayfront Canal and Atherton Channel project to sort of collaborate the planning for the construction of those two projects. That's going to happen next spring so that we only have to tear up the entry road into uh, Bedwell Bayfront Park once, construct both of those projects together in a very coordinated manner, um, you know, make sure that uh, safe use of the park is still possible. Um, and what's been more complicated than I thought, uh, because I'm not an attorney, uh, was getting all of the easements to and from Cargill and the city of Menlo Park and Caltrans in San Mateo County um, at the refuge. This is, there's all been a lot of conversations on this. We're all trading easements with each other. It's all very amicable and very helpful, but there really are a lot of steps and a lot of legal review. Um, that's all happening quite well. And I, I think it's gonna kind of fold right into place in the, in the coming months. Um, where, where the challenges remain are the things I've alluded to. And, you know, so much of this work to raise these levees and build these transition, transition zones, build habitat islands, all of that needs material. Um, most of it is from uh, upland excavation projects. And the cleanliness standards um, put forth by the Regional Water Control, Control Board are very important, but they are strict and they are hard to meet. And um, a lot of material does not pass. And so we, we made certain projections for like how long projects would take to build and that's that was um, based on certain assumptions or, or guesses about um, how quickly we'd be able to get material and we don't always guess right on those. Um, of course there are challenges with making sure that we don't adversely affect infrastructure, traffic, um, park users, things like that. Um, lots, of, lots of challenges there. Um, we're a little worried that uh, given um, 
everybody working at home now that the demand for commercial real estate and things like that might slow construction a little bit. And that will further impair our ability to bring material in on time. And I mentioned the fact that, you know, we did lose a lot of time this year. Um, the other big thing, as I mentioned, is, is uh, you know, most of our work is grant funded and those grants have timelines as they all do. And uh, it's hard to meet those, right? Sometimes the delays are, are uh, just getting all the agreements in place with the cities or other partners. Um, sometimes it's material availability. Um, and we've lost some funding because of that. And we have uh, quite, quite a lot more that's at risk. Um, with regard to Measure AA funding, we've gotten uh, three grants. Um, two, two of those went directly to Ducks Unlimited and one went to the California Wildlife Foundation, which is a nonprofit partner of ours. Um, the latter of those was for science monitoring, the development of a phase two science plan and for certain kinds of uh, adaptive management processes. We spent a little more than half of that. That's been very, very helpful. Point Blue Conservation Science did a, a more than a year long process to um, convene a number of workshops and, and working groups and, and draft different uh, synthesis documents and, and help us build a framework for um, sort of prioritizing our science over the coming years. Um, so that's been really good. And at Eden Landing, the, the grant to Ducks Unlimited has been used for some of that early design and permitting work I talked to you about. Similarly, at, the, at, uh, at Ravenswood and Island Ponds, it's gonna fund the construction. Now we haven't, they haven't prioritized spending the measure AA funds because um, so, so much funding was in hand already from grants that have uh, more impending expiration dates. So they've been kind of prioritizing the way they, uh, the way they spend down uh, those funds. Um, and my last point here is uh, I was asked to sort of give you a preview of what kind of funding we'd be looking for in the future. Um, assuming everything goes as planned in the next year or so, we've got the island pond squared away um, at Ravenswood right now, actually. If things continue to, to go as planned, we're okay. We don't need anything. We do have some uh, monies that are expiring or that are at risk. Um, we are working on extensions for those right now. Um, so I wouldn't count that as a guarantee, but we feel good about it. At Mountain View, we actually are, are pretty good as well right now. Um, we have a lot of our own money, and then there's a collaboration between the city and the Santa Clara Valley Water District for a, a city flood levy project. Um, lots of that is at risk. It, it has taken longer to get things going at Mountain View uh, than, than expected, and, and we're fighting very hard to both speed things up and, and sort of look for some flexibility in that. At Eden Landing, we're actually pretty good through the design and permitting, um, but just to build our project is going to need, you know, a few tens of millions, and we have not really begun looking into the, the construction funding at Eden Landing yet. Um, so last thing, uh, I, I mentioned uh, I mentioned this one earlier, right? We worked with Valley Water to put uh, an application together to the Restoration Authority for um that project of, of theirs slash ours to reconnect two of their creeks into the AA ponds, that will benefit those creeks. It will benefit uh, flood protection and it will further um, the tidal restoration of our projects. And then there's a smaller one that, that Ducks Unlimited and the USGS put together to uh, work on um, a combination gravel beach experiment on the outer edge of Eden Landing uh, and a social uh, attraction experiment to improve the, the sort of success, nesting success of, of uh, of birds, um, particularly uh, terns. So, um, so those are both into you and I will stop there.